everybody. This is Miss Amy from the Wakanda Area Library. Welcome to the holiday baking class for kids. Today, we're going to make two different types of cookies for the holidays. You should have received an email from me with the, um, the recipes. If you haven't, please call the library and we can email you the recipes. So, the first thing we always do before touching food is to wash our hands. So, I'm gonna wash my hands quickly. Did you notice the festive holiday sweater I wore for you? So, it's a good idea when you first start cooking or baking, anybody, even if you've cooked and baked for a long time, it's a good idea to read through the entire recipe so that you have an idea of what you'll be doing in the recipe. And I always like to gather all the things I'll be using to make it more convenient or easier. So we're gonna start with the reindeer cookies. Uh, the first ingredient is one 18 ounce tube of slice and bake cookies. Now, I couldn't find a, a tube of slice and bake cookies. So a tube is this shape, and you would just slice the cookies. And it, the, first, um, the first instruction is to, is to say to put the cookie dough in the freezer. And that's to make it a little bit harder so that it was easier to slice. But at the local Jewel, I couldn't find that type. So I bought these that are already sliced for you. Now keep in mind, if there's anybody in your house that has peanut butter allergies, they also make these in sugar cookies and they would turn out just as nicely. So, the first thing we're going to do is to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And now these cookies will spread out. So when we put them on the cookie sheet, we wanna make sure that we leave a little bit of room. And as you can see, they are square, not round. So I experimented a little bit and I used the bottom of a glass to kind of press down and you don't want to press down too hard because then you're not going to be able to get them off of the, uh, I'm using a cutting board here and just make them into a round shape and they don't have to be perfect because again, they will spread out when they bake. Um, or you can just use your hands and kind of squish them into a circle shape. And I think I might like this method better because they obviously don't stick to your hands. So you're going to make circle shapes with all these cookies. And then, I'm not gonna do all of these, but then comes the fun part of decorating them. So, I have my petite pretzels. And petite, of course, means little in French. And I think it's easier, um, the, the exact recipe says to pinch each slice. I think it's easier if you place the antlers on first. So we're going to place the antlers on and you need to press down a little bit so that they stick into the dough, but don't smush them so much that they're going to hit um, the end of the cookie sheet because then they're just gonna fall off. 
and then I kind of pinch the dough. And we just do that just to give some shape to the reindeer's face. And then we have our M&Ms and you can use any colors you like. The first one I think I'll use brown eyes. And then how about a red nose so that he's Rudolph. I also think it would be fun to break the pretzel twists a little bit and kind of make his antlers a different shape. And then again, pinch the dough in. And I suggest that when you watch this video, like I told you to read the entire instructions first, I think you should watch the entire video first so that you know where we're going. Um, and then you can, if you'd like to kind of follow along with me, you can always pause the video. So you could shape your cookies into circles, pause when you're finished with that part, play the next part, you know, put the antlers on. So I'm going to do a couple more for you. And you can do any color, um, any color M&Ms you want. And you don't have, you don't even have to. That's the fun part of baking. You can kind of um, make it your own. So here's a crazy looking reindeer with two different color eyes and a green nose. And we'll make this one with orange eyes. And how about a yellow nose? So you can decorate them however you like. And I kind of think it's fun to do, to break the pretzel like that and have different shaped antlers. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that we have now um, made the cookie dough into circles, added the antlers, added the M&Ms, and also with the M&Ms, don't press, you need to press down lightly on them to get them to stick into the dough, but don't um, press so hard that they kind of hit the bottom of the cookie sheet. So then you are going to Put them into your 350 degree oven. For eight to 10 minutes until they start to brown. When they do, you're going to take them out of the oven, let them cool on the cookie sheet for one or two minutes. You don't wanna to try to lift them off the cookie sheet when they just came out of the oven because they'll kind of fall apart. So just let them sit on the cookie sheet for one or two minutes and then put them on a wire rack to cool. And the reason we use um, a wire rack like this is so that the air can get underneath them and on top of them so that they cool down instead of leaving them on a hot cookie sheet. So here are adorable Rain, um, reindeer cookies. And don't forget, if you have any food allergies in your family, these cookies do come in sugar cookies. They would just be white instead of brown. Um, just don't get the slice and bake cookies that have pictures on them, like a Christmas tree or a reindeer. So here we go. Here are our reindeer cookies. And in a few minutes, we're going to make our wreath cookies. Hello again, everybody. This evening, back to make some wreath cookies. So I have read through my recipe. I have all my ingredients laid out. And before we start at the local supermarket, if you notice, the, the ingredients are um, two packages, six ounces each 
of white baking bars. Well, I couldn't find six ounce bars. I found four ounce bars. So four plus four plus four equals what? 12, you're right. And what does six plus six equal? 12. So I have the same amount of chocolate just in three bars instead of in two bars. So I've already washed my hands. I'm going to start out with my two tablespoons of butter over low heat. And this is the part you're going to need an adult's help with. So I'm going to put my butter and my 12 ounces of white chocolate into my pan over low heat. And you have to be very careful because chocolate burns very, very quickly. So we're gonna get this in the pan and I'm gonna break it into smaller pieces so it melts faster. And then we're going to stir the whole time. And I have here a heat proof spatula. Make sure you're using a heat proof spatula because you don't want your spatula to melt also. I'm gonna break up my second bar here. And this is not like a regular chocolate bar. This is a, a chocolate baking bar. So it's not like a Hershey's chocolate bar. Okay, that's eight ounces in. And let me put in my last four ounces. And that is 12 ounces in. So I'm going to stir this constantly. Now you could do this um, in the microwave also, but then you have to be even more careful. I would only do it like 30 seconds at a time to make sure that the chocolate does not burn. And you can look in the pot and see how the chocolate is melting already. And I've only had that in for a few minutes, a, not even a minute. So I'm gonna stir this around. And can you guess from the color of my fingers what color food dye we're going to use? That's right, we're gonna make green wreaths. But again, you, you could use your imagination and make any color, color wreaths you have or you'd like. One year for Christmas, I put a purple front, um, wreath on my front door. So while we're waiting for this to melt and I'm keeping a careful eye on it, I was going to show you, this is a dry measuring cup. So this is the type of cup you should use to measure your cornflakes. And then you just kind of use your hand to level it off. There's also another type of measuring cup that you use for liquids. And they just measure a little bit differently. So you should use the proper measuring cup depending on what you're measuring. Okay, and you can see that it's just melting away. And I'm kind of stirring the bottom and the, the hotter pieces over the colder pieces to help it melt. Adults should, adult should be, or your, your grown-ups should be right there with you. 
as you're stirring and stirring. So while we're waiting for this to melt, um, let me just tell you that our calendar is always online at walklib.org. And we, even though we can't get together at the library, we still have virtual or online programs like this one that you can join. And I hope that everybody made their apron and decorated their apron. I'm not wearing mine today because I wanted to wear my festive holiday sweater. Okay, I can tell it's just gonna be another maybe two minutes. See how even more melted it is now? And when it's all melted, we're going to put in our green food coloring. And again, the recipe says one and a half teaspoons of green food coloring. But if you wanted a lighter color wreath, you could use less food coloring. Almost there. Measure in the food coloring because it's still going to have to, the food coloring is going to have to be um, stirred in. So I'm going to measure one and a half teaspoons, and this is a half teaspoon measure. So here's half a teaspoon. And another half a teaspoon which makes one whole teaspoon. And then another half teaspoon. Let's stir that all in and see what it looks like. Pretty the swirls of green look melting into the chocolate. We still have a couple little bits of chocolate to melt. to put four cups of cornflakes, not, not frosted flakes, just regular cornflakes. is going to kind of act like a glue to keep these cornflakes together. See how the, the chocolate is sticking together now? Or the cornflakes are sticking together? stir these a little bit more, but I want to show you the next step. So the next step is to take 
a tablespoon. So you can just use a regular, uh, you don't need to use a measuring spoon for this. Just approximately a tablespoon of our mixture and we're putting it on a sheet that I've lined with wax paper so that it doesn't stick to the sheet. Let me do about three of them. And as the chocolate hardens, it's going to even act as more of a glue. And then you just want to put your finger in the middle to make an indentation and to make a wreath. One more. Mine is falling apart a little bit because I didn't uh, let the chocolate um, melt completely, but you get the idea. So you just go ahead and make all these wreaths with the cornflake mixture that you have in the pot. And now the decorating. So we're going back to the M&Ms and you can put some berries on your wreath if you'd like. Maybe I'll try to put three berries on this one. You can put some yellow ones that might be lights. All around your wreath. You could put any color you like. You could alternate the colors and maybe put some yellow and blue because who, what colors are yellow and blue or orange and blue for the bears. If you wanted to make a bear wreath. And then next, you would put these in the refrigerator and that's going to harden all the chocolate so that it keeps all the cornflakes together. And there are your wreath cookies. So thanks everybody for coming to the Holiday of Kids baking class. Um, just call the library if you haven't received the recipes. I hope you had fun making these two recipes and hopefully, hopefully um, we'll be able to open the library soon and we'll see you at the library. Bye everybody. Happy holidays.